So, this is what Tuesdays look like. Well, I never. And a big welcome to Tuneful Tuesdays, the place where the music lives. Now, as I said last week when I was announcing the changes and the appearance of Tuneful Tuesdays, this is where I'll be talking about music in many different ways. There'll be vinyl reviews and CD news, and there'll be book reviews, and there'll be musical ramblings in the future about ideas and thoughts and formats and stuff. But for this particular inaugural Tuneful Tuesday video, I'm going to be looking at a masterwork. Now, this particular masterwork was prompted by a new release, a new release from the American audiophile vinyl label Mobile Fidelity. So I thought this particular album is a classic, and also give it a bit of a whirl. Now, before we dive into the meat of this particular feature, let me quickly tell you what Masterworks is all about and what I'm trying to do with these videos. With Masterworks, I'll be focusing on generally regarded classic albums or collections of songs or albums that I like in particular. Masterworks is, well, it's not really a series of in-depth digging into every corner long-form documentaries. Instead, Masterworks is presented to you here as a well, it's a sort of brief overview, really. It's here to provide a flavour of the music itself and the artist in particular. It's a sort of, well, it's a sort of pointer, a kind of nudge, I suppose. Something I recommend that you check out at some point down the line. Masterworks is formatted not to take up too much of your time. It's designed to last, well, probably the length of a quick cup of tea or coffee, no more than that. So, with that in mind, let's crack on. It's odd, isn't it? You see a music star, you see that music star up there? on the stage and you somehow assume they were born, bred, and they grew up on that stage, right there. When you're in a record shop or flicking through pages online, the thought that there was even a possibility that this person or these people had another life, well, that's far from your thoughts as you browse through their works. But Harry Nielsen was a guy from another life and one that could have drawn a few yawns from anyone who may have prodded his biography. You see, our Harry worked in a bank. Intoxicating, hey? Even so, he only did that because he lied at the interview, saying he was a graduate. Saying that, Nielsen did have an aptitude for the bank's computers that he worked on during his nighttime job, which, fortunately, left him lots of sunshine hours to work on his songs. Emerging from a poor one-parent family, Nielsen had to hustle to live, and hustle he did. On song terms, he peddled his art to the likes of Phil Spector. His songs were sung by the likes of the Ronettes and the modern folk quartet, the Monkees, and even the Yardbirds. Nielsen eventually quit his bank job when his debut LP, Pandemonium Shadow Show, was released in 1967. A series of albums would follow, including Aerial Ballet, which featured that iconic Fred Neil cover, Everybody's Talking. You may remember that that particular song was chosen as a theme for the film Midnight Cowboy, and that film pushed the song upwards to Nielsen's first top 10 hit. The die was now cast, and Nielsen was singled out 
as a favour by the Beatles of all people, and the man became a star. But Nielsen made a point of refusing to be categorised. He would not be pigeonholed. His albums shifted amongst genres, neatly avoiding being packaged. He released an LP containing songs by Randy Newman called Nielsen Sings Newman, and I bet he sat up all night thinking of that title. That was released in 1970. And then there was another album. This was a soundtrack to a children's animated special. This was 1971, and it was called The Point. In that same year, Nielsen Schmielsen was released after being recorded at Trident Studios in London, England, engineered by a certain Robin Jeffrey Cable, who would work on Carly Simon's blockbuster album, No Secrets, the following year. This album, arguably, was Nielsen's first mainstream release. This album, well, it was a real rock album full of pop references to please as many people as possible of a mature bent. This one was created to launch the man into the stratosphere. It did. One wonders if the coherent nature of this album, which was a little bit unusual for Nielsen, I have to say, was down to Barbara Streisand's older producer, Richard Perry. He was the man with the hand on the tiller. Now, Nielsen's supporting cast was also as solid as a rock for this release, which only added to a sense of confidence during the creation of the arrangements. They included ex-Streisand guitarist John Reby, Reby, a ribe, Eric Clapton man, Jim Gordon, Herbie Flowers, good old Herbie, Chris Spedding, and John Lennon chum Klaus Vormann on bass. Certainly this album, which looks at those careless, youthful days, life in suburbia, and more mature growth and living in the now, has a certain steady flow, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction. Again, not something you'd normally associate with Nielsen, yet it retained the Nielsen wit. So this album always felt like a Nielsen creation. Now, I say creation, and that's true. There are seven originals on this LP, but there's also a few covers, including the mighty Badfinger cover, Without You, Nielsen's interpretation would win himself a Grammy. This track said everything about the album, because in amongst the whimsy and the, the trickery, there was a large lump of melodrama here. No Nielsen LP ever had that sense of creative balance, not before and not since. Arguably the most intriguing part of this album is the name itself. Now, I must admit to scratching a chin on several occasions, wondering about the origins of that name. And then I found the answer from a live WNEWFM review Nielsen did with the quite remarkable radio DJ Alison Steele. Now, some of you will know Alison Steele, also known as the Nice Bird, very well indeed. I think Alison Steele is one of the most incredible DJs who's ever appeared on the airways. Now, this is a, a slight tangent, so please bear with me on this. This is a lady who had a devastatingly sultry voice and who became an institution on the New York radio scene in the 70s. And as a quick tangent, if there's anyone out there who's got any archive shows from the Nightbird, I would love to hear them. I'm aware of a couple of tribute pages because she's sadly no longer with us. But if you know of any complete shows, I think I've got one and maybe a few little bits. If there's any complete shows out there, I would love to know where to find them. Now back to Harry. Poor old Harry. I'm leaving him in the lurch, aren't I? Harry appeared on her show. All her shows were late night. People often fell asleep listening to her. And Harry appeared on her show, very relaxed, very at ease in her company. And Steele opened with, and I quote, I had a picture of you, she said, sitting there and trying to find a title and saying, 
oh, Nielsen, Schmielsen, what's the difference? And Nielsen countered with, well, we were sitting in our room trying to think of a title for the album. And a friend of mine, whose name is Bill Martin, a very old and dear friend, said those very same words to me. So that's the origination of the album's title. Now, as I said at the beginning of this piece, this album can be enjoyed once more via the American audiophile outfit Mobile Fidelity, which has reissued the LP as a double disc gatefold release because the mastering has been completed at 45 RPM, which enhances the sampling rate and improves the overall sonics. It's well worth grabbing if you have the budget. And that's it, folks. That's the end of Tuneful Tuesday number one. I hope your tea or coffee didn't get too cold as I was babbling on. And I'd love to see you on the next Tuneful Tuesday. It'll be some other subject, though. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe a music magazine might be in order. But we'll see. I might change my mind by the time I get there. I'd love to have your company, though. So please join me on the next Tuneful Tuesday. Down the bottom here. Don't forget to check the description. There's a list of chapter headings down there in case you want to navigate around this video. There's links to my social media pages. You'll also find a link to my website for lots of exclusive editorial over there. And if you're not familiar with my Patreon page, check out that. There's some exclusive material over there too. And please consider supporting me on Patreon. It keeps this actual channel in existence so any support would be gratefully accepted i'll be back at the end of the week with another video and i look forward to having your company there so until that time folks bye bye for now